It's spooky season, and Halloween is approaching. I love Halloween, and it was invented by the Celts, and possibly Scotland specifically. I am Scottish, and I live in Scotland, but we don't really celebrate it much here. Like, sure, plenty of people have Halloween decorations, and millennials and Gen Z really are into it, but in recent years, Christmas decorations start popping up before the Halloween ones. However, for my Scottish-themed Fakemon region, Cronio, I get to decide what should and shouldn't happen, and I have about half a dozen Pokemon lines inspired by the Holiday of Horror itself. Long-time viewers may have seen these all before, but there are some things I would like to go over again, and maybe even reveal some new information about these previous designs. Since I have so many designs based on the holiday, I felt a one-stop shop made sense. Are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin. Starting off with my zombie-like mon, which I've retconned the type of. Cronian Ratata is based on Plague Rats while Cronian Raticate showcases the development of this illness. It evolves again into Ratakin, the name coming from Rat King and Kin, loosely based on Rat Kings, the phenomenon of multiple rats being tied together by the tail, which in folklore is believed to make it one super being. When I introduced these Pokemon before Scarlet and Violet came out in my first unused type combos video and on Instagram, this slime was entirely normal poison. While Rattata and Raticate retain this typing, Ratakin is now ghost poison. I originally considered making it ghost poison when conceptualizing it, but decided to make it keep the normal poison typing since you're hitting the corpse part and not the ghost part and because we hadn't had a fully evolved normal poison type by that point. However, ever since Grafii got announced, I started to reconsider, since a load of people thought that since it is a zombie and a ghost tied together at the tail, both being, well, dead, in a sense, I decided to retcon it. I don't usually like retconning Fakemon once they're already out there, but sometimes I see it as necessary. Like how my grass fire bread themed Pokemon, Bunty, introduced in the very same video as Ratakin, now has Darkspun's ability, well-baked body, since that made complete sense. I also decided that my Grass-type starter it should now be called Dandelion, because I think the name fits it better, even though it's not based on dandelions. It's a dandelion, and plus all the names are based on different plants and something to do with lions. Meanwhile, the Cronian Patrat line got redesigned, which I'm showing here because I'm not sure where else to put them. I suppose it works because cop outfits work for Halloween costumes? But anyways, this zombie rat Pokemon is the only fake Fakemon in this video to receive a retconned type. Don't assume all the Fakemon in this video will be ghost type, at least when fully evolved, because Bunty's counterpart from that very same video is also perfectly fitting for Halloween. Janip and Lanternip are grass and grass fire respectively. This line wasn't envisioned as a grass fire type for the sake of making an unused type combination. It was created to fill a slot in the decks, as well as be a counterpart to the Bunty line. I must note, Bunty was created for that type combination, but I settled on the same type combination for Lanternip. Lanternip in particular, much like Gorgeist, is based on jack-o'-lanterns, a common Halloween decoration. Although us in the 21st century know them to be carved from pumpkins, historically turnips were used, since they were more readily available to anyone of any background. Due to jack-o'-lanterns being connected to the spirit world, Lanternip does have my new ability Spectre. It's essentially a ghost version of Steelworker, i.e. it grants the Pokemon with Spectre ghost type stab. I did feel like the fire type was a more interesting avenue to explore, since we've already had a grass ghost jack-o'-lantern mon, and not only are they plants, but you traditionally put a flame, such as a candle, inside. But I did feel it needed some ghost type stab due to the connection to ghosts and spirits. Also, I forgot to put this in the script, but the reason I called Janeep Janeep is because it's a combination of Jack and Neep. Or maybe a more feminine version of Jack, like Jane, but I think it still works. The final non-ghost type I want to discuss is one of my six starter lines. If you want to know why I have six starters, I recommend checking out the first two videos in the series, as the video you're currently watching is more about the Halloween designs themselves, I don't want to really get into the story of Cronio here. I must also say, the other five don't have anything to do with Halloween. Ocat and Musifer are fighting type, since they're based on wildcats. 
and I felt like that fit the fighting type as a pun. Thematically, they are fighting for their lives as they are witches. And if Lucario's magical abilities can still make it fighting type, the same applies to this line. Wildcats are a fairly big cultural thing in Scotland. There's even a myth that's seemingly inspired by them called the Cat Sith. I have probably pronounced that wrong. They are more spiritually inclined, shall we say. They tend to be all black with a white fluffy spot on their chest, which the shinies of this line have in common. They also have ties to witches, which is why the tails on this line are shaped like brooms, to reference broomsticks. And the ears on Musifer are flopped over in a way to make it look like a witch's hat. Speaking of the ears, the reason why this line has such big ears is because there's a prominent legend about the cat Sith called Big Ears, who in the mythology was a cat Sith itself. The tail also has elements of a corn husk doll, which is a Native American doll which are believed to be magical charms which protect homes and livestock. And they are also similar to Samhain shock dolls, which were used in pagan and Celtic cultures for similar reasons, specifically during Samhain, which I've also probably pronounced wrong, but it's a Gallic and pagan celebration celebrated around the same time as Halloween to mark the end of the harvest, which can sometimes be seen as having spiritual ties. Since witches have an association with Halloween, I decided to show it again. Something I can now say is that there is a dog version of the Cat Sith called the Q-Sith. It is a myth I have also made a fake one for. Cronian Fido and Cronian Doxbun, both monograss types, I don't think they fit the theme of this video outside of spooky creatures, so if you want to know more, check out my second regional variants video, which is the 12th video in the Coronio series playlist. I think the most horrifying thing of all is the fact that one in five of you are subscribed to my channel. If you like these fake one, why not change that? I'm hoping to get 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. It would really mean a lot as it would help my channel reach more viewers like you. While you're at it, why not follow my Instagram account at chrono underscore region to see the stats, shinies, and dex entries for my fake mon. There's also my Discord server if you want to join a community of Chronio fans, or if you want to go the extra mile, why not support me on Patreon or become a YouTube member? It'll help me to keep commission the artists that help me to bring my concepts to life and it'll make sure I'm able to keep content coming out and your reward will be seeing videos and fake mon early remember it is completely optional all I ask is you support me whatever way you can whether it be following my social media accounts including my youtube channel which you can do for free or those financial avenues if you can right let's get back to these halloween themed fake mon another stereotypical halloween costume is a sheet ghost chrono started being developed before the announcement of pokemon legends Arceus. Around that time, a very popular way of tackling the as of then unused ghost normal typing was making a sheet ghost. I decided to make one myself but add my own flair to it. It's based on the Sluach, a fairy creature that's said to be the spirits of the unforgiven dead, sometimes depicted as fairies, acting as a host to these spirits, floating around during Halloween. That explains the angry appearance, the ability levitate, and the sheet ghost appearance, since it contains spirits and is a Halloween decoration. You get this mon in a similar fashion to how you'd obtain Spiritomb in Pokemon Legends Arceus. I actually forgot to write its name in the script, um, it's called Oo, four O's. Its name is fitting of Halloween being the on mass here for the sound a ghost makes. The four O's are like zeros, since immunities deal zero times damage, and this Pokemon has four of said immunities. Last year, I showed off what I consider to be the mascot of the Coronia region, Dracula with its evolution, Nosferbatu, in the first general Scottish Pokemon video. Since said video came out in October, I thought it could act as a pseudo Halloween special, so I felt I had to show it in that video, and I feel like I have to show it here again. If you can't tell, they're based on vampires, but not just any vampire, the Lord of Darkness himself, Dracula. This is because Irish writer Bram Stoker mostly wrote the original Dracula novel in the northeast of Scotland. A lot of the inspirations that went into Dracula also went into Nosferatu. Dracula, a bat pup, is dark flying, while Nosferatu is dark ghost, since it is based on an undead dark lord. It also works because holy items tend to be the only thing that can harm a vampire, which the fairy type, its only weakness, embodies. <laughs> We've discussed many spooky creatures, but what about something I'm sure most of you associate with the holiday of Halloween? 
trick-or-treating, which is Celtic in origin, particularly Scottish in origin. I decided it would be the perfect cutesy approach that would perfectly fit a ghost-type evolution, which I named Geyseon because of trick-or-treating's alternate name of Geising. The skeleton patterning is reminiscent of glow-in-the-dark paint or even ectoplasm, and acts as Geyseon's Halloween costume. If you want to know more about it, as well as Cronio's other evolutions, check out the video I made covering an evolution of every type. Yes, Cronio has 10 new evolutions. Eevee is my favourite after all. I hope you enjoyed my Halloween special. Please remember to check out the artists I commissioned for the fake mon in this video, and remember to check out my links in the description below. I'll see you next time. Have a happy Halloween!